I'm Marty Griffin, Contact Center Instructor with Sunset Learning Institute, and we welcome you here today. Thanks for watching. Uh, many times our students have asked, how does a call flow work through the Cisco Unified Customer Voice Portal? And uh, this is an attempt to try to describe that in uh, perhaps a way that uh, might help you understand how that call flow works. So with that, uh, let's get on with that. And we'll move forward here. Uh, this is a functional overview of what it is that we're about to speak about. And this is not an attempt to talk about the call flow here, just to tell you about the pieces that exist in the call flow. We initially have a PSTN where a call comes in, we have an ingress gateway to accept that call. Uh, we see a proxy server living out here, and we also have a CVP call server with three of the services that are necessary for that. One is a SIP subsystem, an IDR subsystem, and an ICM subsystem. We'll get into excruciating detail about what each one of those do, uh, do here in a little bit. Um, and we also have an ICM, which includes the routers and the loggers and all the components for ICM. Uh, we have a, um, a call manager, communication manager, excuse me, and um, over into the side here, we see a component called the VXMO Gateway. We're going to find that this is the workhorse of CDP. This is what's going to be doing all the work for us. And he makes a connection to a speech recognition server, also to a media server. We'll explain why that is and how that works a little bit later on. Uh, we also see a VXML server. A VXML server is going to serve up VXML pages that are instructions that created through Call Studio. A reporting server to fill in the blanks of a uh, interaction between the VXML server and the VXML server. We'll see that happening. And of course, Cisco Unified Intelligence Center, which is the reporting structure of uh, the system. Uh, we see a lot of SIP communications going on here. We see a lot of HTTP communications. And as part of the call flow, we'll explain where each one of those happens. Following through here a little bit, uh, we see the opportunity here to start flowing uh, this call. And we're going to do this kind of a step-by-step -step basis. Yep, I've got numbers up here. And we'll just follow each of these numbers and see exactly how they might work. And we'll start out here with a call that comes in to, from the PSTN into an ingress gateway. And that call comes in and matches up with some dial peers. Mm -hmm. This is an iOS device, and we have dial peers. And like any term that Cisco uses, the term gateway means it's a protocol converter. So here we're converting from the PSTN, the public switch telephone network, to some protocol that we could use internally. That internal protocol in this case is going to be a voice over IP protocol, in this case a SIP version of voice over IP. Consequently, it is a protocol converter converting from PSTN to SIP here. In our case here, we see a SIP proxy server here, and we're going to come back to that in just a minute here, but uh, this SIP proxy server is responsible uh, for a centralized uh, mapping of IP addresses uh, for SIP calls, and we'll forward SIP uh, calls uh, forward to the CDP call server. I would like to point out at this time that this call that has come in here has actually stopped right here. And what is happening now is messages now about that call are being sent forward. And that's what the dotted lines here represent. The CDP call server here has three services running on it. And we mentioned those before, but the initial service here is going to be the SIP subsystem. The SIP subsystem's responsibility here is to pick off all the info from this message, from the SIP invite, and actually answer the call. Yep, answer the call. And it is kind of like a telephone. It answers the SIP invite and has terminated the call. Um, this is actually not a call. It's terminating the message, I might add. And the uh, info that is embedded in this includes things like the DNAS and the ANI caller enter digits, if there are any of those out there. And with that, we have, uh, 
we have uh, the ability to collect that information, and that information is collected and forwarded to the ICM subsystem. And the ICM subsystem creates something that is a very critical term uh, for this environment. It's called a route request. It turns out that the ICM subsystem would like to know what to do with this call. What should I do with this call? And that's what a route request does. And so that route request is sent on through a peripheral gateway here, a PEG in our case, uh, to ICM, and ICM accepts, accepts that route request. And when it does, it says, look, I've got to evaluate this a little bit here, and I've got to determine, in this particular case, uh, based on the DNS that came in, what is the dial number? turns out the dial number is one of those components that you and I have to create in the ICM database. That dial number then is mapped to a thing that's called a call type. Call type. The call type is a reportable object, uh, one in which the, I might have named that call type ABC company, and if I did that, uh, then I would be able to count the number of calls that came in for ABC company, because call types are little ticks, little ticks in the reporting system that says, hmm, here comes a call for ABC company. When I do map that to the call type, I can therefore Magellet, um, map that to a scheduled script based on the scheduled script. <laughs> oh, my spelling here. Scheduled script there, and this is, whoa, this is an ICM script. And that ICM script is going to do the work that is required here for the logic. It turns out that ICM is really big on making decisions. It's not so big on handling calls. It never touches a call. But it makes decisions about those calls. I like to call it the great decider. And that's all it's going to do is decide and give a response back for what should I do with the call. That is a route request that has come to it. So this is a route request that has come through. I have hit this script, and in the script I have ran, uh, run down through several nodes in the script to set the environment. I've set the language, I've set the media location, I've set the media library, I've, I've set this call up so that ultimately I can talk to the caller. And in doing so, ultimately I will come down to an area called send to VRU. The send to VRU has a particular cool function here now, um, and I could have named this thing connect to VRU, because at this point, ICM says, well, I'd like to talk to the caller, but I can't talk to the caller because I never touched the call, so I have to send instructions to a VRU someplace, and ask that VRU, would you talk to the caller, ask him some questions, and then get back to me and tell me what happened. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So this node in an ICM script called send to VRU could have been called connect to VRU, but it's what it is. So let's take a look at what happens to that send to VRU. And um, it says, well, I've got to connect back to the call server that made this route request. And then beyond that, I've got to connect to a voice XML gateway. And we'll show you why that is a little bit later. So it needs to know some things. So one of the things it knows from the message that came in is what is what is said to be the routing client. Routing clients are established by you and I in the ICM database using Configuration Manager. Uh, routing client here specifically says it is this specific CDP call server that sent this call, uh, this route request in. Aha, uh -huh, now you know who he is. And I can take that information and seek from the ICM database the network VRU that has been previously defined. Now that is this VRU, and sure enough, it's this VRU that made the route request. And this is coming together. And the third thing, how cool is this? It says, well, if this is going to be the network VRU, I need to know what label I need to send back as part of the response so I get back to that same VRU. 
doesn't make a lot of sense to go into the wrong VRU because it's not waiting for you. So ICM has got their act together now and it says, look, looking all this stuff up, uh, see the routing client, it's this network VRU, if it's that network VRU, what have you configured as the label? I will send that label back. Now the label takes on an unusual funny form. And that is that uh, in our class of this here, we'll use a label that's a 10-digit label. And I'm just going to give you a 1111111 here. And uh, that is set there to be the label. Uh -huh. And not only that, but I'm also going to send back to you the uh, correlation ID. Uh, so we're going to add 7740. And that is known as a correlation ID, very important, and that correlation ID is going to help us get back to where we were in ICM before. So we've tagged a session that's running in ICM with a correlation ID, and this correlation ID is going to travel with all the messages uh, regarding this particular call uh, for, uh, for the uh, duration. So the correlation ID is actually a number that started at midnight tonight, or last night. And this is uh, the number of calls that have happened uh, from, uh, in the IC, from the ICM perspective since midnight. So there's been 7,740 calls since midnight. Guess what? The next call is going to be 7,741. And they will sequence their way through until um, they reach some type of a maximum. So that's a story here. We're going to send this information back in an attempt to send a VRU, in an attempt to connect to a VRU so ICM can send messages uh, to that VRU and ask the caller what it is that they want. That having been said, we then look at that message that came back to ICM. And the ICM subsystem has an interesting question to ask. It says, look, I'd like to know if this is a number or is this a micro app. Now, we haven't talked about micro apps. You can call them, you can call them, we'll get to it. Um, but what is asked for here is, is this a number? And sure enough, it is a number. And that having been the case, now that on item number five here, a number has come back to ICM. And that being the case, uh, that message is going to be directed down to the SIP subsystem here. And the SIP subsystem says, hmm. I've got an 81011 here, a correlation ID. What should I do with this? And through either in uh, static routes that are created in the SIP subsystem, or in our case, a proxy server who has similar things to static routes called keys, um, it will make a decision as to what to do with this particular situation. And we're going to actually send this thing only 100% of the time using a network VRU label, which is what that label was called, and 100% of the time I'm going to send that to the PXML gateway. Okay? That having been said, you said, well, this is all lucky. This is just lucky as I'll get out. Because the VXML gateway says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't know what is going on here. And here's the reason why. Because when this proxy server did its thing, it had its choices. Can you imagine there's probably more than one CDP call server in your environment? There might be 10, 20, 30 of them that have initiated these requests to the proxy server. Likewise, there could be 10, 20, 30, 40 of these ingress gateways. And likewise, there could be many, many VXML gateways that got chosen by the proxy server at random and the proxy services. I'm at a loss. They have no idea what to do with this. And the proxy service says, well, well, I gave you these calls, and I gave you the message, and I gave you the content for those messages. And the VXML gateway says, well, let's go figure it out here. And one of the first things that happened in the VXML gateway is it encountered these things called dial peers again. You've heard that term. And these dial peers are going to point to a specific service that's running on the VXML gateway. And that's one of the purposes of dial peers, is to point to a service as opposed to an IP address or a host name. 
So in the case of the dial pairs, we're going to point to a service that's called Bootstrap. Uh -huh. and this is all part of solving a mystery about it. I don't know where I'm at here. And the Bootstrap kicks off a file here called Bootstrap. TCL. 100 bucks for any of you who knows what TCL stands for, but of course, we all know that stands for Toolkit Command Language. Okay, that's uh, the scripting language for iOS subsystems is what that is. That having been said, we kick that thing off, and its purpose is to fill up the blanks on a file out there called bootstrap, bootstrap, strat, we put the T in there, dot uh, bxml, uh, and bootstrap bxml has variables in there that bootstrap tcl is going to fill out for us. And what it does, and when it's finished with that, what it has done is it has stuck the IP address of the call server, CVP call server, and has stuck the IP address of the ingress gateway where the call is actually at. Um, so we've got the ingress gateway, we've got the IP address of the call server, and I have filled in the blanks on this file called bootstrap bxml. And what happens when we're done with this here, he kicks off a service that's called new call. You all heard of that, I'm sure. Which kicks off Bootstrap BXML, which does its thing. And it's fortunate that this Voice XML gateway happens to be a Voice XML browser. So if we execute or ask to execute a BXML file, it knows what to do. And it says, okay, I'll do whatever the instructions say in this voice XML document. And the instructions say, well, set up this RTP stream here with the ingress gateway, now that I know what the ingress gateway is, which one it is, and we actually have now a pipe, an audio pipe here that goes all the way down to the caller. And when I'm ready, I can dump audio down that pipe caller. And the second thing I'm going to do is go back to the original CVP call server, but this time we're heading back for the IVR subsystem here on number seven, our hit parade here. And that IVR subsystem says, hmm, we are now in what is called the VRU leg. We have left, in this case, the subsystem called the SIP subsystem, which is said to be the switch leg. Oh, I'm in the VRU leg. And I'm going to send this call over here to ICM and respond back here on number eight, back to ICM. And ICM is going to say, hey, what happened out there? Did you have any errors? And the message is going to be um, errors equals zero. And that's what ICM says, that's what I want. That's what I want. So errors equals zero here, and because errors equals zero, ICM says, well, let me go look up, based on that correlation ID that I saw, 7740, let me find a session out of the hundreds of sessions that are running out there that uh, have tag 7740. And because of that, and he did that, then we are then uh, successfully connected, and we will succeed out of the send to VRU to this run external script. All that, all that conversation we just had, huh, 80 milliseconds. That's a beautiful thing. So it's pretty fast, but have we said anything to the caller? No. Nope. Haven't said a thing to the caller yet. All we've done is made a connection to the things that are going to make uh, that um, a request to the caller, and that is what Cisco calls a VRU. In our case, it's CVP. So the connection has been made, and the connection now is ready for instructions. Ready for instructions. And because of that, the run external script here uh, is our next um, node on the, on the, in the pile there. And the run external script says, well, let's play a little welcome message here. And to do so, 
we would have created a thing that's called a network VRU network VRU script. We would have created this in the ICM database using configuration manager and the information in that network VRU script goes this way. Uh, one is we have a name in there and that name I like to put a little ICM in front of that because it's an ICM name and that name here it just happens to be welcome and we'll just play welcome and this is a name that is known by ICM nobody else it's just ICM watch this the next thing we know is because of the message that uh, has been working out we know what network we are using this is and so it's one item it's two items and the third item it's a really important item and the third item is I will give you this is going to be called the external script here or the and the script here is, in our case is going to be GS comma server comma V turns out that GS just happens to be a microlab. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to hear about microlabs. Also turns out ICM has no idea what a microlab is. Because you know what folks? This is just a message. And so we could send Fred over there if we wanted to. And that wouldn't work so well because the IBR subsystem would like it. But um, ICM has no idea what a microlab is. And so in this message, we are specifying a microlab, a location of where it's going to be, and that this is going to be a VXML message that we're going to send out there. This information, uh, remember the ICM name is known by ICM, and this um, uh, external script down here is known simply by uh, a microlab, only known to the IBR subsystem in the CDP call server. So let's check it out here and see what actually happens. That information has wound up back here again at the ICM subsystem. And the ICM subsystem said, huh, is this a micro app or is this a number? Well, it turns out this time it's a micro app. And because of that, it's going to head off over here to the IBR subsystem there. And the IBR subsystem is going to say, thank you for this message. Appreciate it very much. I know what to do with this because I know what a micro app and I know how to react to it. So the IBR subsystem says, well, i got some work to do here. And if you will, in your mind, uh, picture, if you will, six little templates that live out there. And this is actually, if you go in and look at the software, these don't exist. But this is actually what happens, and so we can picture it a little better in our minds. It is six little templates out there. They are named... Uh, things like GS and PD for play data and M for menu and GD for get digits and CAT uh, for doing some other stuff. And I'm missing one here, but uh, well, that's good enough for now. And so we have six of those little devils out there. And it says, well, this came in as a GS, and I know what to do with that. I have blanks to fill out in this template. I need some information to fill these blanks out because my job up here as the IBR subsystem is to take this information and assemble and create a voice XML document that can be passed on to the voice XML gateway. Mm. So in the GS function out here, uh, we have the uh, ability here to say, well, I want information. I'm going to get my information from three resources so that I can finish filling in the software template that's going on with the IVR subsystem. Mm. Now one of the pieces of information came in from the ICM script itself. And when we created this ICM script over here, we also created GS, V, or server, comma, V. And with that also came in some parameters. It depends on the complexity of the, of the micro app, uh, different parameters uh, that we might have. But all that information is part of.
of the message that came into the side of the Euro subsystem. And that information will partially fill out the template called GS at this point. We have more. And there is more information to be filled out. One of the things we've done when we established the IVR subsystem is we have created an IVR configuration here. And I like to call that the IVR tab. And what we did is we created some static information. Static information means it doesn't change, and consequently there are things in there that uh, help us with that. Those things that change are, uh, for example, how many attempts we're going to use to retry um, a server, uh, a media server, how many attempts we're going to try for speech recognition, what are we going to do for timeouts, and all those kinds of things are static, but they have to be set up, and it has to be part of the information that we send over to the Voice XML gateway, because it's going to need that kind of information. So, <coughs> we collect that information from the IVR tab here, and we fill in some more stuff in this template in our mind here that's called the GS template. In addition to that, we are going to get some information that is coming in for a thing called expanded call context. Uh, these are variables, and these all travel with the calls out there, and is either with that message, and there are 27 of these, and these 27 variables have to do specifically uh, with CBP type calls, and it is a way of passing information from ICM over to CVP. Let's check that out a minute here. One of those 27 variables that lives over here, uh, we would have to set with a set node, and that is called to external uh, BXML. And the whole title of that thing is user.microapp to external BXML, but good enough for right now. Um, and that uh, needs to be set. And what we're going to do is set that variable to be equal to um, an application is equal to sales or service. Uh -huh. Sales or service. And so what we've just done is of the 27 uh, variables that are moving back and forth, we've just populated one of them with a value. Application equals sales or service. Okay. That having been said, when we got here, we're going to continue to fill in the blanks here on this GS template. And one of the things it's going to want to know is going to say, well, if you're going to go up here to the VXML server, I got to know what the application name is. Fortunately, that's been passed on with the ECC expanded contact uh, expanded call contact variables and Application equals sales or service has been set up here, and I'm ready. And all this stuff here has created all the information I need in a template called the GS template. And bam, the IVR subsystem says I got enough. I'm now creating a VXML document that I'll send over now to uh, on item number 11 here. I'll send it over here to the VXML gateway. So the VXML gateway now has a completed uh, voice XML document. Funny thing, it doesn't know what a micro app is either. Okay, so it's kind of fun uh, when you realize that kind of thing. But he does know what a voice XML document is, and he knows when it's given to him. And his job as a browser should be should be to execute that document. And when he does execute this particular document, it says ah. I'm not going to do much here. I have been told in this document that I need to go ask the server out there. Uh, I need to ask the server, hey, do you have an application called sales or service? And this VXML server over here says, well, yeah, I do. And there are four pages of documents that I have for you. Um, and here's page one. And the voice XML gateway says, hey, that's working out. So he gets page one out here. And the first document is a document that tells the VXML gateway, play a welcome message to the caller. Now it's got this pipe set up and everything here. Dump some audio down it. 
and the VXMO gateway says, well, I can do that. Okay, I'm going to look here in my cache, which is the memory in the iOS router, if you will. I'm going to look here, and I'm going to see if there's a file in here called welcome dot wave. Uh-huh. Oh, you know what? There may not be. So i got to go get it. And so what this VXMO gateway will do is he will go fetch from a thing called a media server. Another box up there for you. That little media server here. And with an HTTP fetch, he'll go fetch a file called Welcome That Way. And I'll pull that over and put it in his cache. Now, if another call comes in eventually asking for that same file, not going to have to go fetch it again because it's already in cache and we'll have it for you. So meanwhile, uh, he'll continue with his instructions and play Welcome to ABC Company to this caller down here. And when he's finished with that, he says, well, I'm done with that VXML document. Huh, I'm going to go back to the VXML server over there and ask the VXML server what's next. And the VXML server says, look, I told you I had four pages for you here. Uh, let's go ask this caller if they would like sales or service. And so another document comes over to the VXML gateway. It may have been dynamically created. And we are now going to ask the caller for sales press 1, for support press 2. And a caller is going to say, well, I want 1. Not sure why anybody wants to call sales, but that's just between me and you. Um, so we'll get back up here to the voice XMO gateway, and the voice XMO gateway is going to say, huh, he wants a one. He wants to talk to sales. I'm going to tell the voice XML server, this guy wants to talk to sales. You got another document for me? And the voice XML server says, I told you I had four documents. But the last two documents depended on whether you chose sales or whether you chose service. So here's document for sales. And we're just going to go back and forth with the caller now and continue on with this application. And back and forth until it gets to a point where the VXML gateway says, what else you got? And the VXML server says, that's it. That's the end of the application. And the VXML gateway says, thanks for talking with us. And he comes back again and starts his way back. And ultimately will succeed, uh, will succeed here out of the run external script, having done everything that you're supposed to do. Now, there's an interesting point, as opposed to some other things I've been telling you. Um, there was a lot of back and forth action going on here. Back and forth, back and forth. And you know, ICM had no idea that was going on. No idea whatsoever. It just said, hey, go play something, get back to me. So that back and forth action has some vital information in there from a reporting standpoint that you as a customer would like to know. And that information is collected by the thing called the reporting server. And the reporting server has collected that information and it will fill in the blanks of the cradle to grave reporting that's required by most customers and tell uh, what happened uh, with the media server and uh, the VXML gateway and the VXML server itself and whatever back and forth action had to happen. So good enough, uh, that's the purpose of the reporting server. It gives us an excellent opportunity to, to note that. So we're back to ICM. We have succeeded out of the run external script node now. And it's time to see what it takes to finish this call up. Oh, OK. Please stand by. And so we get to a point now where that response has been sent back. Uh, on 13, 14 came back, and it gets to be a point in the script where it says, well, we have collected enough information about this call. We have learned about the caller's objective. We ought to be able to get this caller to the correct kind of an agent to help them out. So that's effectively what we're about to do here. And we will, of course, uh, pick up from there. And we'll get down through the script here on the 14 down to 15. And we're going to hit a node in the ICM script called Q to Skill Group here. 
and there's interesting things that can happen there. <clears throat> Apparently we want to talk to somebody in sales. So we're going to go to a skill group where the members of the agents, the agent members out there may or may not be ready for a call. If they are ready for a call, that call is going to go directly to that agent. If they're not ready for a call, then get this now. We will succeed out of the failure to get an agent. What we're succeeding at, of course, is succeeding in queuing to the skill group. That's what we're succeeding in doing here. And in our case here, we see that we are going to connect to a run external script. And that's going to be a ICM name there. ICM script name. And it's going to be, we'll just call it a hold. And BRU, network BRU, is defined already connected to it, and to add on to that and continue on, we're going to do something called PM, PM, uh, hold, inferring that that's hold.wave, we don't need it .wave, and we're going to get this thing from the application subdirectory for our prompts. These are prompts that you and I save, not Cisco prompts. Cisco's prompts are saved in a system folder. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, March, April, May, those kinds of things. This one is one that's customized especially for this application. Um, welcome to ABC Company or ZZ Top Hold Music, whatever you want to use there. And so that hold music is going to get played here. Well, let's check this one out. This is a little different now. Um, I'm going to send this PM Hold A with some attributes of uh, parameters back. It's going to come. <coughs> all the way back here on step 16 and 17, the XML gateway, um, the IBR subsystem had the responsibility of creating a voice XML document using a PM, a PM template, uh -huh. one of the six templates, and filled in all the blanks and created a voice XML document and moved that on to the voice XML gateway, who at this point said, yep, I think I can do this. And this voice XML gateway may or may not have had to go off to get the hold.wave file, but if he did, he would have gone to the, to the uh, media server and brought that back, and we would have played it down to the caller again. Hmm. That's interesting. Did you notice that we did not involve the VXML server? That was not involved here. All, all um, micro apps that we have, um, only one of them invokes the VXML server, and that's the GS micro app. So the PM micro app says, yep, I go on my own. I can get the old music here, the ZZ Top stuff, and we can play that to the caller. And we'll continue to loop around in this thing. Probably we'll have a priority node in here to raise the priority and keep it around a little bit here until an agent becomes available. When an agent does become available, then ICM will pick that agent. And this is called ICM picks the agent here uh, for that particular route. And that message comes in here as a 1321. Ooh, that's an extension number for an agent. And it gets into the ICM subsystem and it says, huh, is this a micro app or is this a number? Any ICM subsystem? Well, this is a number. Okay, so now I'm heading down for the SIP subsystems. And when we hit this thing and it recognizes this is a request for a call transfer, there's two things will happen. Number one is we'll disconnect that VXML gateway up there. And number two is we'll send a call transfer request down through the SIP proxy server through call manager, and the call manager will ring this phone. And when the agent answers this phone, he will transfer that RTP stream previously up here, down here to the agent, and the agent is talking to the caller. Uh, and that's how that happens. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> sure enough. Uh, the question is, is how does ICM know that that happened? 
how does ICM know that call was answered and maybe got put on hold or whatever happened to it? Well, ICM knows because, you know what? You and I, well, we built this system, put a peripheral gateway in here, and a peripheral gateway connects to ICM. And the peripheral gateway provides agent status to the caller, uh, to the ICM, and the ICM then can report that that call has been answered, it was hung up, put on hold, whatever the status might be, uh, is passed along through that peripheral gateway back to ICM. And that, folks, is how it happens. And hopefully that's been of some help to you. Um, and on behalf of Sunset Learning, uh, we appreciate uh, your attendance and your uh, you watching the, this little presentation, and hopefully it was helpful to you. And uh, I'm Marty Griffin, and we'll say goodnight.